Farm News Media presents Farm News 5. A cleaner Lake Erie partnership has been formed. The late Dr. David Schweikart was honored and Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts has a look at market activity. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. More than 1,200 draft horses took part in the Michigan Great Lakes International Draft Horse Show and Pull held last weekend at the MSU Livestock Pavilion in East Lansing. The show and pull featured first-class draft horses all performing in the arena or on the field. What makes this event unique is that it's the only one in the world to feature halter classes, hitching, plowing, pulling, and riding for draft horse breeds and mules at the same time and location. MJLI is one of the latest shows in the season in the fall and uh, we're comparing breeding and we're looking at what breeding we're going to be using for next year, uh, different bloodlines, how, how their combinations have failed or uh, progressed in the past and today this is an important one because this winter is going to determine what we breed. The draft horse today is used in a lot of different ways. Uh, we're still working them in carriages in towns. We're still working the draft horse in the agriculture section, the logging section, and in the commercial hitch section. Um, these are used for advertising, actually, for a lot of large commercial companies. Still their ability as a graceful horse, a pleasing horse, and a friendly horse is what sells them. A memorial celebration for Dr. David Schweikart was held Friday, October 13th at the Morrill Hall of Agriculture on the campus of Michigan State University. He passed away unexpectedly on June 2nd, 2017. A professor at MSU, he specialized in agricultural policy, trade policy, and law in the Department of Agriculture, Food and Resource Economics. Michigan Farm Bureau President Carl Bednarski presented a plaque to be displayed in Morrill Hall to remember Dr. Schweikart and his commitment to higher learning and improving the future of Michigan agriculture. The best thing, though, about Dave was his passion. The passion for the many topics he studied and in the way that passion came through in his presentations. Well, he was teaching a class leading a discussion with farmers, or providing keynote ad addresses to a major conference. His passion always came through. We who gather here today to mourn the sudden death of Dave Schweikart, a true friend of Michigan agriculture. His wit, intellect, friendship, and commitment to Michigan agriculture are sorely missed. The Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee is devoted to investing soybean farmer checkoff dollars to address grower concerns. We focus our efforts on production research, market development, and outreach. Learn more at michigansoybean.org. Working to improve water quality in the Western Lake Erie Basin is the mission of a new coalition known as the Michigan Cleaner Lake Erie Through Action and Research, or Michigan CLEAR. The partnership includes Michigan Farm Bureau, along with other agricultural and environmental leaders, universities, conservationists, and tourism and economic development interests. Scott Piggott, Chief Operating Officer of Michigan Farm Bureau, says the partnership is designed to bring non-traditional groups together, to give everyone a voice, to build shared understanding, and to offer a stake in success. The goal is to develop a better picture of how algae blooms are fueled and identify what near and long-term steps Michigan stakeholders could support for promoting water quality improvements. With a look at the latest market activity, here is Michigan Ag Commodities' Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. Trade this week has had a defensive tone after the rally late last week. Soybeans have taken the lead for corn and wheat throughout. For beans, harvest pressure will remain short-term. A firmer export pace will be needed to inspire a move above highs set last Friday. Chinese buyers are staying relatively quiet, with total Chinese purchases of U.S. soy down 17% from last year. Corn has been dully lower this week with extremely limited trading ranges. Price movement has followed soybeans, but overall trading volume is light. Fundamentals are bearish with increased production and ending stocks from the USDA last Thursday, but firm technical resistance remains in place around contract lows. 
Basis will feel some harvest time pressure for corn and beans that has lagged behind the average pace. Warm and dry weather this week should give progress a boost. Monday's crop condition report could be cause for at least a little excitement. In general, however, we will have to wait for the USDA's November supply and demand estimates for a jolt to the system. I'm Chris Betts for Michigan Agricultural Commodities. For more market information, go to michag.com. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.